Alright, what's going on guys? Welcome everybody to another video on the channel. Hope you guys are doing well. So today is going to be ranking every character in Rogue Company on the tier list maker. So you're now actually going to be able to see a fully defined tier list of where I'm putting all my rogues and I'm going to explain my reasoning for all of them. And I think you guys are going to enjoy this video and I would also love to know what your rankings look like down below in the comment section as they're going to vary differently depending on personal preference and everything like that. Now before we get started, I'm going to be giving away three keys for the Rogue Company Founders Edition. I have three more remaining and I'm going to be giving away to some of you guys in the comment section while it is free to play if you guys want the founders edition that comes with a little more stuff then all you guys got to do to enter the giveaway please make sure to give this video a like rating subscribe if you are brand new to the channel as around 86 percent of you guys are not currently subscribed our goal is 300,000 before the end of the year so i'd really appreciate that and that's pretty much it but other than that guys enjoy the tier list today we're going to be ranking every character and i did record this live so i'm going to be you know putting it up on screen as we go along but anyways enjoy the video all right let's get started so the first rogue we're going to rank is phantom and and i i've made the case in the past in previous videos that i think phantom is one of the best rogues in the entire game and i still hold true to that right now however admittedly uh phantom can be a little bit of an all or nothing character and i think we all know that right if you're landing shots you're zoning out the enemy properly and you're using the kit as intended then phantom is seriously one of the scariest rogues to go up against on the battlefield and probably one of the biggest blessings if you have a good phantom on your team and is able to you know set up picks and and make plays for you however if you're if your phantom's not really doing much and just getting picked off over and over again then you're going to end up being a complete detriment so again it's it's like one of those super committal characters it's all or nothing and I think for that just because it's complete polar opposites I'm gonna put phantom at s tier because the 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 echelon of, of double s tier would almost present no weakness but unfortunately phantom does have a fatal flaw if if you know exploited properly or you know she has a lot of vulnerability so we're gonna give phantom s tier I still think is one of the best works in the game and is probably one of the most fun to play at least personally speaking so uh, yeah, I'm happy to put Phantom at, at S tier. Now we got Anvil. So, again, I've been playing Anvil tr a little bit more lately. He's not one of my favorite ones to play. Like, I don't get the most enjoyment out of running Anvil. However, that's not to speak on his, like, objective capability. Now, I think Anvil, because everybody's gotten familiar with the game and, and understands the kits a bit more, I think Anvil is at the crux of pretty much every good strikeout team. And I think you know like the opposite of phantom i i think anvil is more effective in strikeout and in respawn modes than he is in demolition that's not to say he doesn't have use there and i think he certainly does but uh, i i think he's a little bit more of a presence uh in respawn modes just generally speaking so i think i'm gonna have to give anvil also s tier um his c4 i don't know if it's gonna catch a nerf at all but if it does i would probably drop him down to a tier but his both of his weapons are unbelievably good his kit is completely just insane and he's also getting a buff to his perk soon that gives him extra armor and and while that perk has seen some flack recently it is going to be getting some adjustments but other than that i think i'm gonna have to give anvil s tier he's pretty pretty dang good um Next up, we've got Chalk. So, in my original ranking, I put Chalk at the number one spot. And I, I've, I've still been playing him a bit, but maybe not as much as I used to. And I don't really know why that is. I think people now have kind of gotten the effect where if you down a Chalk, you pretty much got to finish him off. You know, you, you almost have to thirst it just on the off chance that he does have his self-res available. Now, not only does he have that self-res, but you have the capability to you know, re-stimulate your health in the middle of a gunfight so you can take your enemy by surprise. However, if they're paying attention, they're going to prepare for that and maybe be able to counterplay you. So if if played properly, you can completely negate Chalk's abilities, but his guns and his kit and everything else is still unbelievably effective. So I think I'm going to... I think I'm gonna gonna give Chalk A tier because if you know what you're doing, it's pretty easy to shut him down. But he is a, like a complete noob stomper. I think he lacks the the nuance to be up in S tier with Phantom and Anvil right now. But I would say if there was a category between S and A tier, I think I would put Chalk there. But other than that, he's he's a sick rogue, unbelievably good, and I'm gonna have to give him A tier. So next up, we've got Trench, and I don't think. I don't think Trench really has the legs to go the distance. Um, so this is the character that that his main ability is to lay the like barbed wire trap that will slow enemies down. And to be honest, like in my games recently, 
he's it's just been like more of an annoyance than it is an actual detriment to your game you know what i mean like it's kind of just frustrating when you go up against that and it's kind of easy to counterplay too and it is pretty much not effective at all in something like demolition you're going to see the most effect out of those abilities in in something like extraction or strikeout so respawn modes trench is a little bit more effective there but generally speaking i don't think he's one of the best um i think i'm I think I'm going to put Trench in C tier. Yeah, yeah, again, he's not great. Not horrible, to be honest. Like, he's still viable and you can use him. But I just, I think he's outclassed and certainly outplayed by other rogues in the game. Especially dependent on the game mode. So, I think C tier is probably pretty fair. If not, I'd maybe put him B tier. But I'm going to leave him there for now. Okay, next up we have Dallas. So, I, God, I would say that Dallas is like the perfect balance between his effectiveness amongst respawn modes and demolition like he's he's just as effective either way now the key thing with dallas is that you, you can reveal enemies through walls and if you make callouts to your team and they act on those callouts dallas is like he, he's impossible to stop you know he's an absolute force to be reckoned with but if you are revealing enemies and your team is just kind of letting them go by it, it, this is especially detrimental with randoms you make a call out and they don't do anything about it you're wasting your ability and his kit like while it's really really good i think there's rogues with better guns and perks in the game than dallas but his his kit pretty much rewards a steady hand and good communication so i i think with that being said because i know not everybody and every time you play you're gonna have a good communicating squad that's just kind of how it is so I would say overall Dallas is probably going to be I would say a tier like he, he's kind of on the same level as Chuck where uh, he can be easily counterplayed and rendered not effective if you know counterpicked properly but he is pretty good when used properly so I think a tier or if there again if there was a section between a and s tier I think I'd put him there but I think that's reasonable to give Dallas now we've got Ronan so probably I, I think I would say right now is my favorite rogue in the game personally, and I, I, I also believe objectively one of the best. And again, the kit is super straightforward. The perks are, you know, just straight up effective. She's really, really hard to counterpick too. There's not much you can do to snuff out a Ronin, um, just like with an easy ability or an easy perk. Ronin is pretty much good no matter where you put her. So th that means demolitions, that means you know strikeouts and respawn modes absolutely insane I, I i would say that her smg is less effective than her ar so i don't really see many people using the smg on this kit but you know it, it happens from time to time this is one of the only rogues as well where i'd actually kind of recommend running the melee weapon if your game goes on long enough and you can throw the katana you know you can get those easy one shot picks pretty good for that and i i would say that her her perks sort of complement that play style well i'm gonna give ronin double s tier again because unlike phantom she pretty much has no weaknesses and is not rendered effective listen in any circumstances to be honest so uh, probably one of those characters that has to be double s tier certainly one of the best and i would imagine a lot of you guys would agree too so all right moving on next we've got vi um not a big not a big fan of vi to be honest don't really think that's a hugely effective character her i don't know her assault rifle's all right um i just don't think i think her ability is so obvious and it's kind of like trenches where it's so easy to get around and i think she just more or less serves as an annoyance rather than an actual threat so that being said if you can if you can easily shut down vi's abilities and you know you stay on top of everything she's really not much to deal with you know i i would say she's about on the same level as trench although i may drop her a little bit lower because i i think she's easier to counterplay than trenches and her her kit and her perks might be just a little bit less effective i think vi is going to be the only one i'm going to drop in d tier maybe uh, we'll see what happens but i think she's one of the least one of the least good characters in the whole game i don't know what you guys think but i i, I don't know just i don't see her very much in pubs not not very popular and i think there's probably a reason for that so we've got big dima so um again this is another one of those rogues that is kind of straightforward doesn't have much weaknesses similar to ronin is he the most effective character i'm not sure now he doesn't have like anything crazy where you can like he, he doesn't have any good communicative properties where like you can set up sick plays he's kind of just like a solo fragger you know like if you would want to jump in by yourself maybe get some kills or whatever like dima's probably your choice but he doesn't have anything that is like um out of the ordinary that could be utilized creatively in a team you know he kind of has 
power and grenade launchers and that's about it so that being said i i still think he's pretty good and good demos are still pretty scary to go up against would i give him double s tier maybe um yeah i think i will actually again i i, I just think dima is super hard to counterplay again not not anything crazy in his toolkit but really no good way to shut him down effectively i would also say that dima is going to be more effective in respawn modes rather than demolition um that's just based on my personal experience some of you may disagree but i think overall dima has to be pretty much on the same plane as ronin and i think i'm happy with that rating right there all right moving on next up we have glitch and a lot of you guys in my comments said that glitch was like the sleeper pick the most underrated rogue in the game and while that may be true um i i i think i think the results and the popularity of this character kind of speaks speaks for itself and i would also say that glitch is the most game mode dependent rogue to run so like essentially in demolition glitch is going to be a lot more effective because it's more about playing methodically setting up your equipment and 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 counter playing all that glitch is able to shut all that down effectively in demolition but i don't think he really has the i don't think he has the presence in strikeout or extraction that he does in other modes i just i i, I don't think he can shut things down quick enough before they're propped right back up you know what i mean he's kind of always fighting an uphill battle his kit is still pretty good um but i just i don't know i i, I don't think he's i don't think he's amazing or anything so i'm gonna give glitch Hmm, I'm going to probably give him B tier just because of his demolition effectiveness. If we were just saying respawn modes, I'd probably say C tier or D tier, but I think he's better in that. So I, I think B tier is a probably pretty fair rating. All right, up next, we have Talon. Now, honestly, I don't feel like I have much to say about him. His, his main ability is to reveal enemies in a radius using a sensor dart around him, which can be picked up and, you know, rethrown and everything. So I think it's pretty good if like, I think Talon's pretty good if you know what you're doing, but I also don't think that he's super effective in anything except respawn modes. And, you know, also if you're revealing enemies and you're not communicating with your team, or conversely, if the Talon on your team is not communicating what he's seeing and everything, then he's pretty much rendered effectiveless. His perks are okay, and his gun setups are all right, I suppose. But again, he's just kind of average here. I don't really have much to say. He's, he's okay but not not great to be honest so i'm gonna put him in b tier along with glitch i feel like that's a relatively fair rating and maybe he'll become more effective as time passes but yeah just all in all not one of the best in my opinion but certainly not bad like he's not a bad choice but you know he's he's incredibly situational as well um okay moving on next up we have scorch actually one of the better ones if you ask me um especially due to the new buff coming to a few perks in the next update i think scorch is actually going to become more effective as time goes on and um opposite to talon i think she's going to be better in potentially demolition i'm not sure um scorch is good on one-on-one -on -one gunfights however in you know multiple situations or in multiple encounters doesn't do super well compared to other people but taking a scorch one-on-one -on -one is pretty difficult and i would say that her gun setup is is pretty is definitely higher tier maybe not the best um but generally speaking i think i'm gonna have to give scorch s tier she is really really good especially if you know what's going on and again in individual encounters and gunfights almost impossible to beat so i would say that scorch is a cut above the rest especially uh all the ones under a tier but i think i think s tier is a pretty fair rating i wouldn't say double s tier because she is a she is pretty easy to counter pick so yeah i don't know i i, I think i think s tier is, is is pretty fair for that so um uh, moving on now we have lancer um to be honest a rogue that i liked a lot in the beginning but maybe not so much now i think the problem is that actually interestingly i think lancer is is platform dependent based on how effective she is so essentially i i think lancer is going to be less effective on pc than she is on something like console and the reason for that lancer's incredible speed is so hard to track i think on on like consoles and, and stuff like that but on pc where you have a mouse it's maybe a little bit easier to you know track down that slightly quicker movement speed but her guns maybe 
her, her guns don't do the most damage to be honest and I, i've certainly noticed that you if you just try to go all out aggressive and and just you know just shred people you can kind of dance around them but you can't just put out an incredible amount of damage very quickly i think lancer's still pretty good though so i think i'm gonna put her eights here again not one of the best I, I i liked her in the beginning but i think as people caught on and and understood her abilities a bit more and especially her ability now where you know you can silence your footsteps is still decent but she's also easy to be locked out if you're if you're paying attention you have good map awareness definitely easy to shut down so lancer's probably eight tier along with dallas and chalk pretty happy about that to be honest so i think it's a decently fair rating um moving on we've got saint um yeah saint saint is really good um not only is this kit you know above average his main ability to heal teammates around corners and just like pretty much for a, a, anywhere in the map um if you can keep revives going either in demolition or in respawn modes he's unbelievable you know he, he really is at the heart of keeping a team alive and, and actually getting wins so with that being said um i'm tempted to give saint double s tier but i also don't know if he belongs there um the only problem is like he's not incredibly he's not like a huge force on his own right like saint isn't just a top fragger again he's he is he is what his role suggests he's a support character so i think i'm gonna get I, i'm gonna give saint s tier yeah I, i'm gonna give saint s tier and leave him there happily he's really really good and again um if you're playing with an actual team of people i would always recommend having at least one on the squad it's going to help out so much but also easy to shut down if people are listening for the ability that's coming to heal people you know if the drone comes out you can hear it and then you can go and thirst that kill and effectively shutting it down and then last up we have dahlia um while it doesn't appear on this list i'm just gonna photoshop her in i think pretty easily i'm gonna give dahlia double s tier kind of like ronin where the kit is just super effective and is good in any scenario but also her ability is kind of like saint where she can you know revive super far away and she's also to able to get another passive ability based on the character that you link with and there's like a million ones that you different ones you can get but pretty safely i'm gonna give dahlia double s tier so along with ronin and dima uh dahlia is really really freaking good and definitely one of the more popular ones that i'm seeing uh, in public matches her effectiveness is shared pretty evenly uh, amongst respawn modes and demolition. So I think overall, she's absolutely amazing. And I think most of you guys would agree. So there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what my ultimate rogue company tier list of all of the characters looks like right now. This may change in the future due to balancing patches and everything. And, you know, it's also going to be based on personal preference a little bit as well, no matter how much you think it might not be. But yeah, this is kind of how I rank everybody right now in, in terms of effectiveness and how much you might like them in your game so let me know you guys think of my tier list down below in the comment section if you agree let me know if you disagree let me know if you guys enjoyed the video give it a like rating subscribe if you are brand new to the channel before you go and if you'd like to go follow me on twitch where i stream almost every single day links in the description down below i also started a brand new secret channel that is not gaming related at all and if you want to find out and see what it's all about links in the description if you want to go give it a look but anyways hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and i'll see you all in the next stream or the next video have a good one i gotta go and peace out